Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this new week. Praise God. Now, all these studies we've been doing from First John. Why are we doing it? It's because John, the disciple John, was one person that truly understood the heart of Jesus Christ. Now that's why his epistle was different from the others. And also, his instructions are the instructions that not only bring us to the place where we ought to be, but also proves in us that we are there. You see? So that's why we're doing this study. And when we do, you check yourself and like, am I fulfilling this? That's how you relate with the Word of God. See, it's not just to sit down and hear the word of God and say, oh God, fulfill your word in me, fulfill your word in me. No, you also ask yourself, am I this person that the scripture is talking about? Because when you get born again, the spirit of God begins to walk in you. And when he begins to walk in you, what happens to your life? He begins to walk out in you. Remember, the Bible says, For it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, when the Spirit of God is working in you, a proof that he's really working in you is when you see the scriptures, when you study the word of God, the Bible, and then you now realize that, oh, I understand what he's saying here. I, I understand it, not by head knowledge, not because you have read several commentaries, no, but I understand this experience because I've gone through this experience before. So I know what he's talking about. Praise God. That's, that's what the word of God, that's how we, we relate with the Bible. We don't read the Bible and then go and try to leave it. No. We read the Bible and then we see our life. That's why John said, truly, our fellowship is with the Lord, with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our fellowship is not with the Bible. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. How does that fellowship work? By the Holy Spirit. So when we are truly in that fellowship, then we will see that our lives is now bearing witness to what is written in the scriptures. Are you, do you understand the difference? Now, some people, they read the Bible, they begin to pray, God, make me, make me, make me. And for several years, they are not seeing any change in their lives. But the truth is this, if you are truly saved, if you are truly born again, it means you have the Spirit of God walking and living inside of you. And if that is true, the proof that the Spirit of God is in you is that when you see the Scriptures, you will see that your own life is bearing witness to their testimonies. Now I'm sharing this with you so you understand and then know how to relate with these things. If you are not seeing that change, then you need to go back and sit down and ask yourself, am I truly saved? To be saved is not to stand up in church and lift up your hands and say after the pastor. To be saved is having been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And He is the one that bears witness in your own heart that you are saved. How does He bear that witness? What I just told you. You meet other believers and they share their experiences. You're like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You read the scriptures because what you're reading in the scripture is the experience of someone, see? You say, yeah, I understand what John is saying. Praise God. Yeah, that's how it works. Oh, Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because day by day, you are taking us into the life that you have ordained for us to live. And our eyes are being opened. And thank you for your spirit, Lord. It is working indeed in us, producing in us your mind and your will. So Lord, this whole week, we will see the great manifestation of your power in our lives. 
and in our nation, in our environment. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we go into the teaching, I have a special announcement I need to make you know, to you. On, on Wednesday, the 19th to the 25th of May, the Lord has commanded us to fast and pray. And what are we fasting and praying for? Here's what the Lord said. Pray of fasting and praying and welcoming the new season of your nation, Nigeria. Praise God. Yeah, God has said a new season is coming on our nation in this month of May. And we believe him. And now he is giving us instructions on how to pray concerning the new season. Praise God. So, so from Wednesday the 19th to Tuesday the 25th, we are going to be fasting and praying. Now, if you want to join us in that, in that meeting, if you're in the city of Abuja and then you want to join us in that meeting, I invite you to join us. Call our numbers showing on the screen or send us a message and um, we are going to tell you where we're meeting and, and some of you that will, maybe you're not in Abuja, you want to join us online because we're going to be meeting every evening to pray. See, every evening we're going to be meeting to pray. And I believe. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when we obey God, He fulfills His word. So we're going to be witnesses of the new Nigeria that God has spoken about. And, and during that period, the Spirit of God will be sharing um, some deep truths with us. So I, I would like you to be part of it. Praise God. So call, call us and then we'll tell you how to... Um, be part of that meeting. God bless you. All right, turn your Bibles with me to the book of John. First John. Now we are in chapter four. We, we, we've done chapter one, we've done chapter two, and then chapter three, we finished chapter three last week, Friday. So we're in chapter four now, praise God. From verse one, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Wonderful. He says, don't believe every spirit. Notice, he didn't say, don't believe everybody. He used the word spirit. Why did he use the word spirit? I'll tell you why. You hear human beings speak. You watch television. You, you, you watch movies. You watch whatever. Listening to music. Listening to people. Now, they are communicating something. Now, behind every communication, there is a spirit. And the truth is this. It is truly the spirit that is communicating to you, not the person. That's why sometimes you find, you know, you know, somebody speaking. I say, you said this like me. I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> say, no, I, how could I have said that? But you see, you heard that. So the person may not even understand verbatim what they are saying. Or they might be saying something, inferring to something else. But you are hearing something else. Why? Because there is a communication taking place between a spirit and you, I'm telling the truth. So that's why he's saying to us, believe, don't believe every spirit. I'll give you an example. You remember Peter. One time, Jesus was talking about how he was going to die and, and stuff. And the Bible said, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now, what did Jesus say to Peter? He says, get thee behind me, Satan, because you don't flow with that which is godly. Now, you look at that, say, uh, he called Peter Satan. No, he didn't call Peter Satan. Jesus wasn't rebuking Peter in that scripture. Jesus was rebuking the spirit that was communicating in the words Peter was speaking. Did you get that? So, while Peter was being honest, 
While Peter was being, I mean, Master, you can't die. How can you be talking about the you who have taught us that he that believes in you will not die? Now, you're not saying that you yourself, you will die. What, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Please shun this talk. Don't stop talking, this, especially in public. Stop saying these things. Now, while Peter was speaking, Jesus began to hear words. And now this is one thing you must be take. You, I mean, you, you have to be careful about. While Peter was speaking, Jesus was hearing words from Peter's mouth. No, from the spirit of the devil. Now suddenly he began to hear, but do you really have to die? I mean, think about it. Do you, do you, do you really have to die? Now, instead of Jesus to commune with that spirit. He rebuked the spirit immediately. He says, Satan, get thee behind me. Get out of this place. And I'm sure Peter was like, Master, you called me Satan. Hey, don't worry, you don't understand. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, it's the same thing that happens. You remember Jesus spoke to a fig tree. He spoke to a fig tree. Why did Jesus speak to a fig tree? Because a spirit spoke to him from that feature huh yeah see now jesus was hungry and then he got to the fig tree hoping he was going to get fruit from it and then he he got there like wow no fruit and suddenly the fig tree spoke to him now not the fig tree a spirit spoke to him now this is what happens to our lives every day i can almost tell you every second we are hearing voices and if the voice you choose to believe that will either enhance your life or destroy your life someone may come and gossip someone to you it's not about the person gossiping it's about the spirit that begins to speak in that atmosphere do you understand what I'm saying? Now, listen, listen, listen. One thing you must understand is this truth. Uh, Satan has access to every place. Some people feel, oh, if I go and live in church, Satan cannot come near me. Who told you that? Do you remember Jesus fasting, having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights? He, he wasn't doing that fast. And guess what happened? Satan shows up. If you are truly the son of God, you want to say, I've been fasting for 40 days. Satan, that place should be so charged with power that Satan cannot come close. That's a great deception. And many people have fallen for this deception. So you feel because you are in that holy atmosphere, Satan cannot even come near. Now it's a deception because in that holy atmosphere, Satan will suggest something to you and you will easily take it that it is God. And you run with it. Because you've told yourself, I mean, Satan cannot speak here now. See, that's a great deception. And Satan understands this thing. So he, that's how a lot of believers have destroyed their lives. They are fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Then in that process, an idea just comes into their spirit. They just say, oh, this is God. And then they run off and destroy their lives. So John is telling us, don't believe every spirit. Praise God. I remember many years ago, many, many years ago, I was, I was, I think I was fasting. I was in, back then in school then. So I decided to go off to a particular place to pray. It's the dam, you know, in our school. So there's this particular place where the, the, the system gathers the water and it drops it. So I choose there to pray because I wanted to really be free. I wanted a place where I can shout, I can sing, I can worship, I can cry, whatever. I just, I, I, without anybody wondering what's going on with this guy. Praise God. You know, sometimes you just want that liberty. That's why sometimes we go up to the mountains. Not because God cannot hear us in our rooms. No, because you want a place where you can freely express yourself. See, so I went there and I was praying. And, and oh dear Jesus, there was a certain period that the, the whole place, you know, you, you just, the whole place was charged. I felt everything was just heavenly. See, I, I mean, at that point, I, I, I really literally felt I could float. I'm telling you, we get to that place where we pray. Now, that was my first experience, you know, of what I'm about to say now. 
And in that whole atmosphere, I was just worshiping and dancing and just having a wonderful time. And suddenly, you know, because I went by the edge and I was just worshiping and just my eyes were open, you know, just worshiping. And I just looked down into that place, you know, the whole water was dropping. And then I heard, do you know, right now, if you jump, nothing is going to happen to you. I, I mean, in that atmosphere, I heard that voice. But you see, the moment I heard it, I staggered back. And I paused. I said, that's not the Holy Spirit. You see, it, it just came to me instantly. Said, that's not the Holy Spirit. And immediately I rebuked that voice. Praise God. Our time is up. Praise God. So we're going to continue tomorrow. Praise God. God bless you. Bye-bye.